Are you one. ready? <laughs> Are Am you I ready? <laughs> Hold on, wait, I'm not ready. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay. Camera roll. Camera rolling. Wait, no, not yet. Camera rolling. Okay. Action. We're out here because we've been making sort of like a film about the local area and the big local in Hanwell. And so how people want money to be spent when we're given money for 10 years. Make people aware that there's one million pounds invested in the area and ask people of their opinions of what they would like to improve in the area. The first time I visited this building must have been about seven years ago. I used to think it was Buckingham Palace because it looked very like the Queen. I thought it was huge. I was only small, about eight years old. The whole of the insides changed. When I first came, there was nothing here at all. We used to just go upstairs to the judo. I remember we had to go up these long spiral stairs and they were very, like, didn't seem very strong and safe to be going all the way up to the top of the building. But yeah, it was, it was, everything was pretty old there. It was good, I liked it because it was quite spooky downstairs where the pottery rooms are. Okay, can you not all leave me on my own? So I quite like, I like that, yeah. <laughs> I can remember the gym and the boxing club. It's just like one big hall with like, it's still, the ceiling's quite low. And um, you have some windows that just point out the front here. And I used to say to my mum, Mum, it's Buckingham Palace whenever time I came to the park. But my mum said, no, it's the Buckingham Palace is so far. I don't know, I don't know how long it's been here for, it looks old and everything. No, I think it's a historical landmark. I know it used to be a, a workhouse. It used to be this home, children's home. It was an orphanage and I know that a famous actor called Charlie Chaplin went to the school in the community centre, but his statue is an, in the park near um, to the community centre. and. I think the moral basically is that no matter where you grow up, you can still go far in life. Right, lads. Listen up here. Hold it. Oi, oi, here. Now, because they're using downstairs as a soup kitchen for the striking miners, I'm going to let Mrs. Wilkinson use the bottom end of the boxing hall for her ballet lessons. So no hanky-panky, understood? Prepare. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and and eight, and hold. Hold it. <laughs> Bands used to come here to rehearse. When I was younger, I used to use it for the club in the holidays. I came here with my school, my first school. I was in the choir, so we came to do a, a singing performance. 
my husband and I used to run the cub pack that was in the community centre. I really enjoyed it. We could do lots of different activities. It was kept me occupied in the summer. It was lovely, you know, the first room on the left was our room and we had a big healthy pack and we had all the um, greenery around <coughs> on the outside to go and play and we could play football or cricket or whatever games, wide games and the children loved it. The boys, you know, they were really excited. I was born on the estate, and I'm 72 now, so... It was a good place, and it's still, to me, but it's different changing. There used to be a clinic in the Westcott Community Centre. What was the nursery is now the French school, so that's a fairly big change for us. Um, I've seen lots of building going on. Well, what used to be a lovely allotment is now flats. To me, there hasn't really been quite, not really a lot of changes that are known. The estate really seems just the same to me. You know, it's a, it never was bad as when I come here and it's still just the same, you know. I'm looking very forward because Cockney Close is getting new things and new windows. and It, it looks exciting because... My mum said from all the years she's lived there, there hasn't been changes, so it would be good. A few things. When in my own road needs a few improvements, I need some signs that people to let people know that children are crossing, you know. Speed cameras. There's zebra crossings for people coming out of school, so it's safe for children. One way system here. Because there's always blockages here when the road's busy, but if there was a one-way system, then there wouldn't be. And down the bottom of this road here, if there was a crossing there put, because it's very dangerous for elderly people. Uh, less traffic it would be nice, you know. I mean, it's in the main, air, main traffic where the children are playing, and it's quite, sometimes it can get quite noisy. The pavements can be taken better care of because it's always sticking up. And you poof! Over your foot. I see a lady fall at the end there by button up on the pavement. I fall up the road and hit my side and mash it up. I had to go to hospital. I tripped on the pavement. It's Christmas time. I laid on the ground for nearly two hours. Take up the slabs, dump them, and put them on tarmac. That would be lovely. I have a trolley and a stick. I have to be careful, you know. I walk very slowly. <laughs> but I still get around, you know. <laughs> the station down at Castle Bar, I would want ramps for buggy access. There's two sides of the bridge and you have to, it's got so many steps and you have to go up the steps and then there's like a flat piece and then you have to go down the steps and it's like, and then the school's right there as you look, so. I would have more buses coming further onto the Cuckoo Estate. Yeah. To help the elderly people, you know, there's buses which take people who can't walk. With us, we are more able-bodied, we can jump on the bus. A few of them on Zima frame and tripods and they cannot get out. With a minibus or a wheelchair, we all could, like a community, mix together. We need it. We need a bus. We really need it that we can go whenever, whether winter or summer. There's a lot of people with dogs and they just mess all over the pavement. And sometimes you come out your gate and there's dog mess there. Maybe we could um, get more dog bins to put their business in. It's not hygienic, it's not healthy for children. When you walk down the street, you see a lot of litter on the floor and it's polluting our world. So a lot of bins would be nice. And not putting bottles in, in hedges and stuff. The streets would look much cleaner than having rubbish thrown on them. 
It should be made into a garden estate. Maybe they can tidy it up, plant more flowers, give the world a bit more colour. A bit more modern, greener and more lively. So when they come, when people come and visit, they'll, they'll think it's really exciting and they think it's a good environment for people to be around in. Yeah, I think it, it could be a lovely estate. In the community centre, oh, I'd like to see it well used, um, properly maintained. Cleaner and make the air smell more fresh. The entrance of it puts you off a little bit, and I think that ought to be improved. I'm making it accessible for everyone, lots of things going on there. If it was advertised more and spoke about more. Made up more enticing, inviting. Well, then more people get involved. Because a lot of people do miss, miss it, funny enough. You know, they do miss it for some reason or not, and they would like to see what's going on. Ooh, it's like a child in a sweet shop. I would like to see at least a bit of art and... A tea dance <laughs> for elderly people, you know, where they can go and they can get a little jog around if they want to. I teach dance myself, so I definitely put on a dance scheme for the kids to indulge in. A bit of play and joy just to let children's happiness and troubles come to an end. I would make sure there was enough sports clubs for everybody. Uh, introduce more sports in the area, that would be nice to join a going some team going on or something like that. A lot of sports and things like that that are not expensive. People haven't got the money, have they, to pay for sports and stuff. It's like football programmes or rugby programmes or like they, they, could build, they could build a football pitch in the park. And maybe floodlights in the park. There could be always a tournament with the olders and the youngers, where the teams aren't just youngers v oldest, it's a mix. So it's building up teamwork between the different generations. Yes, a swimming pool. <laughs> that would be very handy. I think um, archery is a good activity that could be done in the main hall, sports hall. And gym, like... Um gym as well the kids should be able to do like gyms and stuff but also for the elderly you know, they can work out a little bit in the park i build on i think i build on a bit more the exercise the exercise apparatus i think that would make the park a lot more enjoyable and copley a lot more safe <laughs> maybe maybe extra education wise or whatever for around the area as well in particular Courses that give skills to the youth, to teenagers, to help them in whatever they want to be in the future. So for instance, people who like music, for them to be able to go to a music stage and practice. Or for people that want to learn about IT, they can do an IT course. Just something hands-on that will help them. I would like to see more things for teenagers between the ages of 16 and 20. They need a lot more outdoor activities and for the little ones as well, because there's not much things for like little ones. It's like, like little, you have to pay for everything and stuff like that. And especially in the holidays, there's nothing, n nothing there for the kids to do or anything. They need to do more clubs for the children, um, especially after school as well. It's quite hard because Hobain have an after school club, but it's the only school around here that does. Nowhere else seems to have anything after school for the children, for the working parents, which is quite hard because I'm a working parent myself and I have nothing, I find it really difficult for childcare after work. Apart from the park, if it's raining, there's nowhere to bring the kids. I think on Copley Close, I think I'd improve, build on a bit more the kids, the kids' playground. Children don't have nothing to do, they only play out and they have to bring their own toys out, so I think more play areas. Somewhere to go to play or interact with other children or learn some sort of uh, culture backgrounds or musical histories and stuff like that? Um, 
I would like to see more of the older generation getting involved with the younger generation. So maybe some of the money could be put towards projects that could incorporate all ages. Just basically just things for everyone so everyone can come together as a community. I think there should be another, a clinic there for children, you know, for babies and for where mothers could go and things like that. And um, perhaps um, a clinic in there for elderly people as well. Well, but I think one of the ways in which we could possibly look at spending some of this money would be to have like a initial point advice centre. Like an um, age concern or citizen advice bureau. Like a community place. Where people can pop in and say, I've got a problem with my benefits or the council housing or... Where when we get forms and all that, you know, we get a little bit confused, you know, what they're all about. Because they are a bit daunting when you get older. And then, at least then, they can then be directed to the appropriate organisation. To help us and, uh, uh, you know, to make life a little bit more easy for us, really. Yeah, I think um, a lot can be done there. You know, it can be really interesting. <laughs> It's a large space that can be used for so many different community projects, groups within the area. Get the communities together, all the different nationalities together to do things together, get everyone involved. It should be a community asset. I would have a paddling pool outside with sandpit area. I would have a cafe bar outside run by local volunteers to raise the money to keep it going. Um, outside toilets. I mean, it would be nice if we had a communal garden. And possibly have some sort of ranger that patrols the park. I think there's a lot of rooms in there that could be utilised, so we should get a lot more activities so that the community have somewhere to go. Um, have more community events, parties, fates, um, street party things with picnics where everyone gets involved and keep them up to date with what, what the government are doing. I'd like to build a lot more on um, gaining a platform for kids to get out into the media because it's really hard to do that nowadays. I think if that money was invested in building the links between the community and the media, I think it would f help the kids flourish a lot more. I think the big local panel needs to keep going strong, get the word out there, um, ease, carry on doing what they're doing keep the community a community. I've enjoyed so much filming. I never knew you can have so much fun by just one little camera. <laughs> We've learned how to film and how to use a camera and I've learned how to um, connect things into a camera and things like that. I've learned how to focus on some of these faces and film and direct and sound and being part of a camera crew. I've been the director, I've been um, in sound and I've been the cameraman and... Which one do you like there? Being interviewed. <laughs> <laughs>